Welcome, 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 welcome to another edition of 3D Boxing Podcast. Uh, some great news to get into. Um, Terrence, Manny Pacquiao and, and Terrence Crawford uh, have confirmed that they are in advanced talks uh, for a fight at some time this year in 2020. Uh, Crawford went on the Ike Barak show on the zone and said that they, they're interested in Pacquiao's team is interested. It's just a matter of getting the money right. Uh, Bob Arum confirmed that. Bob Arum said, um, you know, a, a lot of times people are all for these fights, having these fights, different venues. Um, but with Bahrain, uh, which is an island nation in, um, which is an island nation in the Middle East, they actually have the money, um, according to Bob Arum. It looks like we're in good shape to actually make that fight. Um, so that's good news, uh, which is also strange. And this is what I wanted to get into. So Manny Pacquiao and Terrence Crawford were together um, under the top rank banner for years since Crawford was at one foot. Well, really, when Crawford was at 35, but they started having those rumors, Crawford versus Pacquiao, when, when Crawford was at 140 and unifying and becoming undisputed at 140, making that fight. But it, it seemed like Pacquiao had no interest in that fight. It seemed like Pacquiao was ducking him. Um, I, I think even Freddie Roach said that um, they they had no interest in the Crawford fight. You know, um, Pacquiao made a demand that he wanted at least twenty million dollars guaranteed to make the fight, which isn't going to happen. I mean, no one gets twenty million dollars guaranteed, especially for that kind of fight. Um, at that time, Crawford wasn't. A, a huge commodity. So Pacquiao doesn't get 20 million guaranteed to fight Thurman. He didn't get 20 million guaranteed to fight Broner. I mean, not even close. Um, so that wasn't going to happen. That was Pacquiao's basic. That was basically Pacquiao's way of saying he didn't want the fight. Um, but now this seems like he, he's come to the table, uh, you know, with, the pandemic going on, they're going to have to get a big site fee, right? Because they can't do a gate in Vegas um, or, or anything like that. So they're going to have to go somewhere uh, where they can get a huge site fee. And Bob Arum saying his brain is, is legitimate. Uh, I don't know anything about Bahrain except that it's an island nation in the Middle East. I think it's an archipelago. Someone could check me on that. Um, but it looks like that fight's for real. That offer's for real. So it's a matter of just you know getting each side to agree to the terms and, and the money. But it, this brings me to to my next thing. Um, do they see something in Terrence Crawford? You know, Terrence Crawford's last fight against Kavalakis wasn't his best performance. Not by a mile. It was one of his worst performances. Um, he had I had him down three rounds to none. Um, he arguably got dropped. I know they rule it a slip, but his legs were not underneath it. He was hurt several times um, in the second and third round. Um, and then he came back, scored a ninth round knockout, uh, floored him three times um, in the seventh and uh, in the seventh and ninth he was he was dropped uh, for a total of three times. It, it wasn't virtuoso. Crawford Crawford was getting hit a lot. He was coming forward a lot more than he usually does, fighting a lot more aggressively. Maybe that was by design, or maybe his legs aren't the same. Uh, but I, I think Crawford um, his performance. Left a lot to be desired. I think guys like Pacquiao are seeing some flaws in him that they think they can exploit. You know, look, Crawford is a, whole, a a future Hall of Famer. Terrence Crawford is a pound for pound elite. He's the only pound for pound elite, elite, elite like top three or four of in the welterweight division. You know, Pacquiao and Spence are probably on your list. Well, Spence is Pacquiao may be on your list, but they're further down the list. Crawford was you know a pound for pound king when you know um, when he became undisputed and then. But he beat Horn. He was recognized as the pound for pound king of the sport, and rightfully so. I think that crown as number one 
belongs to Canelo now, but you probably have Crawford at two or three, which is where he belongs. Um, and he was avoided. You know, they, they did. They looked at Crawford. He was with top rank. They didn't have to make the fight. They had an out. He's on the other side of the street, like Spence said. Um, so they, they weren't eager to make the fight. But now you see Pacquiao, after what seemed like years of ducking him, is now interested in making that fight, which is weird. To me, that says that they saw something. They saw something in Crawford's last performance, which was not his best. It was lackluster performance where he got hit a lot. He did score the knockout and got the stop, and so he ran his record and went to 4-0 with four knockouts in 147 pound fights. So as a welterweight, Crawford's 4-0 with four knockouts. It is what it is. Against, you know, good competition. Not, not the competition you'd want, but good competition. You know, it, it is decent competition. Kyle Lackis, Amir Khan, uh, Benavides and Horn. It, look, it's not world beaters, but it's a decent resume. Um, but I, it, 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 they had to have seen something in him because Spence is chopping at the bit to fight too. Spence said that fight will definitely happen in 2021. So Spence, who was saying, who, who when Crawford moved up to the division, Crawford said that uh, Spence said that Crawford was meaningless to him. Right? He said, "Go get a belt. Go get the belt the WBO off of Horn." Um, and then I'll fight you. Then he got the belt, and then Spence said, well, why wouldn't I take the easy route and take and fight Sir Porter? Well, that proved to be a life and death type of fight. It wasn't easy. But he was looking for excuses not to fight him. Now he wants to fight him. Now Spence wants to fight Crawford. Pacquiao avoid, avoided Crawford for years, literally years over at top rank when Crawford was coming up from 140. And now Pacquiao wants to fight him. So what's changed all of a sudden? Like, what's changed so drastically? It's got to be something in Crawford, right? I mean, they think if Crawford comes forward, he's vulnerable. He's not that strong. Although I, I think he's got wiry, skinny guy strength. Like, I really do. Um, like, he was not bullied around the ring by Jeff Horn. It was a massive, massive uh, 147. I'm not saying Jeff Horn. Um, well, Jeff Horn beat Pacquiao. Let's be, let's be reasonable. Um, but... Um, Jeff Horn's not Errol Spence, but Jeff Horn, if anything, he's strong, right? Like, what makes him competitive is his size and strength at 147. Um, and he was not bullied around or forced backwards by, by Jeff Horn. Like, Jeff Horn did not have his way with Crawford physically the way he did with Manny Pacquiao. So I, I don't think Crawford's not strong. I, I think that it's hard. Like, do, you, do y'all see any holes in Crawford's defense? I don't see him. You know, um, I, I just thought he fought in an unconventional style, maybe by necessity, right? Maybe his legs aren't what they used to be, and he can't fight going backwards and circling like the way he used to. And maybe this is he's going to be more stationary now. Maybe he's going to fight out of the uh, southpaw stance, more stationary, coming, you know, or, or coming forward and, and not moving laterally so much like he used to. I don't know, or, or, or maybe this was just a one Maybe he came in, he was upset, he wanted to get a knockout, and he was, you know, whatever. But the Kyle Lockett's performance was not his best performance. Like I said, it's probably his worst performance, at least in recent years. I mean, going all the way back to when he broke on the scene in, in the Prescott fight, whatever that was, like 2011, 2012, what year was that fight, the British Prescott fight? I mean, that's when most of us woke up to Terrence Crawford. This is his worst performance I've seen since then. It was not good. All right. But I mean, it might have been so bad it landed him this fight. Because it looks like, from what I'm hearing, from what I'm reading, it looks like this fight has a real chance of getting made for this year. Pacquiao wants to fight in 2020. Crawford wants it. I mean, Crawford, if he doesn't get this fight, Spence is going to fight him in 2021. You know, Spence is going to fight Garcia, Danny Garcia. What does that leave? For, for Terrence Crawford. You know, no one really wants to see... I mean, look, a Kel Burk fight is kind of like Javante Davis versus Gamboa. Like, it, it ain't the worst fight in the world, but it ain't, it ain't a great one either, right? So, like, if Terrence Crawford doesn't get packed out, he was gonna get, he's going to fight Kel Brook. One's a mega fight. Fight of the year, Crawford versus Pacquiao, which determines, in reality the best welterweight in the world. And I'm going to get to that, you know, in, in Crawford versus Pacquiao. And the other, Crawford versus Brook, no one's really interested in, right? So, that I mean, outside of, if Pacquiao doesn't make the fight, Crawford's not left with a whole bunch of great, attractive options. Even though Brook's not the worst option, it's not a good one either. Um, 
But so the, look, the best welterweight in the world is a, is a three legged race. It's it's Crawford, Spence, and Pacquiao. Crawford, Spence, Pacquiao. Crawford, Spence, Pacquiao. Yeah. Um, Crawford. If if you don't think Crawford's the best welterweight in the world, him being Kell Brook doesn't put him over the top. Him beating Manny Pacquiao does, right? If you don't think Manny Pacquiao is the best welterweight in the world, him beating Mikey Garcia doesn't put him over the top. You know, what puts him over the top. Beating Terrence Crawford. And in a way, they put Errol Spence out, right? And I know Errol Spence is coming back from the accident, and, and, and that's fine. And he's going to fight Garcia, which is a decent opponent. He should handle Danny Garcia in, in, in a good fight, in a competitive fight. But, you know, we would all expect Spence to win that fight. Um, you know, Crawford and Spence, the winner would be have unified the other two belts, and they would have a better victory at welterweight than anything Spence has, right? Because if... um. Crawford beats Pacquiao. Pacquiao's a better win than Sean Porter. If Pacquiao beats Crawford, well, Crawford's obviously a better win than Sean Porter, right? So not only would they have unified the other two belts, they would have a better win than Spence, which means they're the best welterweight in the world. That's what's on the line there. So I mean, there's, there's a lot. Let me know. Prelimin, preliminarily, I would take Crawford. No, I would take Crawford to win that fight. Right? I, I think Crawford beats Pacquiao. You know, um, I, I think he can outbox him. And I, I he, he, when Pacquiao does get on the inside. That Crawford will make a miss and counter him. But it's a good fight. I mean, I think it's Pacquiao has plenty of moments in the fight. I just think over 12 rounds, Crawford a much better boxer, much more you know fundamentally sound. I, I think he can jab and outwork and, and make Pacquiao miss a lot. Um, so I would pick Crawford to win comfortably on decision. You know, especially, you know, Pacquiao's a year older now. He's 41 now than the last time we saw him, which was almost a year ago in, in the Keith Thurman fight. Uh, so I mean, who, I would imagine most of y'all are going to pick Terrence Crawford to win that fight, but leave your thoughts, comments below. Let me know who you think are go is going to win that fight. Um, and Pacquiao's not done yet, right? Pacquiao just beat Keith Thurman. Pacquiao has a better win at 147, recently at 147, than either Crawford or Spence. He beat Thurman, who beat Porter. Um, and, and earlier in 2019, he beat Broner. It was a really good year. He, Pacquiao's not shot yet. He's not He's not a spent fighter. There's still plenty left in the tank for Manny Pacquiao. Could he beat Sean Porter? Maybe, right? Um, he probably could beat Porter. I don't think he can beat Crawford. I don't think he can beat Crawford. So on that, I, I, I would take Crawford to beat him. But... He's not fighting. I know he's not fighting a prime fighter. Right? Pacquiao's obviously not in his prime, but you can't say he shot either. Not, not after he just beat Keith Thurman, right? Maybe that was his last great moment, but that's yet to be determined, right? Like Mosley. Mosley was like 37 when he beat Margarito, and he looked spectacular doing it. It's like, oh, he's rejuvenated himself. Uh, he's as good as he ever was. And it was his last great fight, right? He went out and then he got destroyed by Floyd a year later, and then. He fought Sergio Moore to a draw, and then he got destroyed by Pacquiao, and then he just struggled from there on out. Um, so, I mean, he lost it all at once, and maybe Pacquiao loses it all at once too, right? Maybe it's that one last great fight that he can muster up. But maybe not. I mean, look, Pacquiao is one of the top 20 greatest fighters of all time. I mean, we, we he's listed as an eight-time world champion. We, we can debate that. I mean, I don't really – Whatever, right? He's an all-time great fighter who came up in weight classes. He's one of the greatest. He's one of the greatest southpaws to ever fight, right? So, look, Pac there's still plenty left in Pacquiao, and, and it, it's a good fight. I'm hoping we get it. It looks like Bahrain is a realistic landing place for this, and it looks like both guys want this fight, which is great news for fight fans. But again, let me know what y'all think. Leave y'all comments, um, predictions, things like that. Um, follow me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing. 3D Boxing blog. You can find my latest article on fightpost.co.uk. Uh, um, and then we will be back on MCR podcast probably tomorrow, I think, um, with a new with a new uh, episode of MCR podcast. Uh, but follow me on all forms of social media. Uh, find my work at Fight Post and uh, my podcast on MCR podcast. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.